Hi, my name is Brandon Grazley. I'm a high school math teacher, and I've given my students a bunch of questions finding the domain and range for some uh, relations. And uh, the domain, that's the set of all x values, or independent variables, values, that you can put into the equation. And the range is the set of all things you can get out, the y values, or uh, dependent variable values that you can get out. Uh, so I've given a bunch of questions here and a bunch of answers here, and I'm going to show you how to get from uh, question to answer. So we're going to use Desmos to do that. Desmos is the online graphing calculator service and uh, let me just get over there now. I'm going to paste in that first one. This is the equation for a line. Uh, the independent variable is x, the dependent variable is y, and that's going to be true for all the ones we do here today. Um, this line goes infinitely up and to the right, infinitely down and to the left, and so the range is easy to see. I think you can get as high as you want by following that line to the right, and you can get as low as you want, as far into the negatives as you want by following the line to the left. So the range is the set of all possible values, all real numbers. And similarly, we can put any x value in. If we go off to the right here, I can put in very large x values, as big as I want. Also down to the left here, I can get put in as large and negative values as I want. So any x value is also possible. And so, looking at the answers, I have that x is an element of the reals, or x is part of the set of real numbers, and there are no restrictions like we're going to get into later, so that's the domain. All x values are possible uh, as long as it's a real number. Same with the y values, all real y values are possible for the, for the range. Let's look at the next one here. This one's a little bit more complicated, and it doesn't copy and paste very well, but I'm going to show you how to get it in there anyway. This one's going to be a parabola. When I paste that, you see this is supposed to be x squared. I'm going to hit, I'm going to highlight it, hit shift six, the little caret symbol, and the seven thirds is supposed to be seven thirds. And I just hit slash to get the division thing happening there. So there's seven thirds in decimals. Okay, that's a quadratic. It's uh, opening down, so that means it travels infinitely down towards the bottom there, and you can go as far to the right and left as you want. So again, just showing you in the answers, any real number is okay for x. x is an element of, that's the letter epsilon, and x is an element of the reals. We use a fancy r here, that uh, that's called blackboard bold, the, uh, the way we write that. So x is any real number, but y, y can't get above this. That's the maximum value for y, that's the top of the hill. You can't, for example, put in some x value and get y equal to 6. That's not possible. The highest value you can get is this value, which is uh, 7 thirds if we write it as a fraction. And we read that right here out of the equation. So that means that y is any real number that's less than or equal to that value 7 thirds. So I write that, oops, sorry, I write that in the answers here. y is an element of, we use curly brackets or braces, y is an element of the reals such that, that's that bar there, such that y is less than or equal to 7 thirds. Okay, so that is how we restrict, this is a restriction, this is how we restrict the range to be um, a part of the real numbers, but not all of the real numbers. For example, not 6. All right, let's do another one. This one is written a little differently. You can see it doesn't have a y equals. And let's get rid of my parabola, paste this in, turn my square, oh, Sorry, that's not the right thing at all. Let's copy that properly. There we go. Square, and that's a square. And hey, look at this. This is not a function. This is a relation, but not a function. How do I know that? Well, this is an ellipse. And if I look at a line like, say, where x equals 2, see this black line going through here? Let me make this thicker. That line at where x equals 2 is hitting this relation in two spots. That's the vertical line test. In fact, I can put in other x values as well, like x equals uh, negative 1. And look, it's hitting it in two spots also. As long as that happens, as long as there's any place I can find a line like that, then um, this fails the vertical line test and is not a function. It's only a relation. OK, so anyway, we do know some things about this, though. Uh, if I travel along here, it has some special points. Everything happens between negative 4 and 4 for my x values. If I zoom out here, you can see there's nothing outside of that.
And so the domain, I can only have x values from negative 4 to positive 4. So in my answers here, take a look. Here's the domain. x is an element of the real such that x is between these two numbers. That is, negative 4 is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to positive 4. So we usually write it in a, a row like this to show that x is between these values. And for y, the y values, let me get rid of these, uh, there and there, the biggest y value I can get is 8. The smallest one is negative 8. And so in my answers, I have the very same kind of setup. y is an element of the real numbers such that negative 8 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to positive 8. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, this one is another one that's written not as a y equals, but it's a familiar kind of shape. Make that my squared again, shift 6. Aha, this is a parabola written in standard form. And as I can see, uh, I have a maximum here of 0, that is at 0, 0. And this goes down forever, I'll just zoom out, this goes down forever. To the left and the right, we can put any value in for x, but we can only get y values that are at most 0. And so, if I look over here at, which question is this? Question D, x is an element of the reals, all real numbers are okay. y is an element of the reals, except that y has to be less than or equal to 0. That's its maximum. Okay, let's try this one. y is the square root of x. This one does not copy and paste well, so I'm going to type it in. y equals, you type sqrt, sqrt, squirt, x. Aha, let me zoom in a little bit. This one's interesting. This is a positive square root of a number, and that number has to be a positive number because if you put a negative in there, you don't get a real answer out. So uh, this, this is pretty interesting. It comes in and it goes to 0, 0 right here, and any value is possible after that. I can put in really big numbers for x, and I can get really big numbers for y as long as I go far enough to the right. And so looking at our answers here, uh, this is question E. X is an element of the reals such that X is greater than or equal to 0, so no negatives allowed. And Y is an element of the reals such that Y is greater than or equal to 0. You can only get positive or non-negative numbers out of there. Okay, this one looks pretty gross. I'm going to move my window off to the side here so I can see that while I type. All right, let me just uh, explain what all these things are as we go. You don't need to understand the whole function to be able to do this. Okay, x is fine. So y equals x times the tangent of this stuff, tan bracket. Now ln, that stands for ln or natural logarithm, ln bracket. This is a square root, sqrt. Okay, that put that in there for me. Now I need x squared. I'm just going to hit my arrow key, my right arrow key once plus y, shift 6, squared. Okay, we got it all. You press enter. Let me zoom out a little bit here. I'll make my function visible. Ooh, what's going on here? This is some kind of spiral, and there's some weird things happening over here. Hmm, Desmos is actually having a hard time with this because the function is so uh, complex. But I can see as I zoom out and wait a moment, this gets bigger and bigger, and it keeps getting larger and larger in both directions, up and down, left and right. And this function, if you were to zoom out really far, you would find that it really does carry on forever. Now, that one's complicated, but question F here, this is uh, it has a simple domain, all real numbers, and a simple range, all possible values. Okay, so we can get anything we like uh, for values for, uh, for these. Um, let's go here to G. I'll copy that one. I'm going to have to fix my squared again. There we go. And let me get back to regular zoom here. There's a value. I can see that it's going to go from negative 8 up, and it'll carry on infinitely in both directions. This is just another parabola. So looking at my answers, all real values are possible right here, G. For x, domain is everything. The range is everything 
sort of starting at minus 8. y is greater than or equal to negative 8. It has to be up here. Okay. Ooh, what's this one? These bars here, same bars, but these, this time those mean absolute value. This is the absolute value function. So y equals, I'm going to put that in, that's called a, a bar or a pipe. Uh, in computer science it's called a pipe. So this function looks like a big V. I can zoom way out if I want. It's still a big V. All it does is it gets rid of the sign of the x value. Uh, makes it all positive. From 0, 0, as you go left, uh, sorry, as you go right with your x's, this goes up. As you go left with your x's, this goes up. And so any x value is possible, but the y values are all going to be positive. And so you see here, i got to remember which question we're on. That's h. x value is um, the the domain is everything, the range is everything where y is greater than or equal to zero. Positive or non-negative numbers only. All right, two more, and these are similar. They have one over something. One over x, let's start with. y equals one over x. Let's go to regular zoom again here. Hmm, this is pretty interesting. This guy goes uh, in sort of two directions, but it's sort of missing this middle bit here. It's as I uh, grab an, my values here, this gets close to zero. The x value gets close to zero, but it can't actually be zero. And the reason is that this would be one divided by zero if I tried to put x equals zero in there. And so when I look here at question i at the domain, the possible x values, x is an element of the reals such that x is not equal to zero that value is not possible. And you know what, I'm just realizing as I wrote this, there is one other thing, one other restriction that I missed. y is an element of the reals, but I can't get y equal to zero either because we're approaching, this is called an asymptote. I can't put a number in for x and get zero for y. That's not possible. I'd have to sort of put infinity in there and we don't really do that. And so I need to add a restriction here on my, my um, range that y is not equal to zero. I'm going to have the same problem in the next question here actually. Let's go and look at that one. 1 over 3x minus 2. So y equals 1 over 3x minus 2. Oh, I missed my 3. Let me try that again. There we go. Same kind of thing here. I'm, I've got a spot where I can't uh, hit this value and that spot is at, let's see, x is equal to uh, two-thirds is that spot. And the reason it's that spot is because if I put two-thirds into this function, three times two-thirds minus two, three times two-thirds is going to be two, and then minus two is equal to zero. And once again, y can't equal zero. So I missed that in both of these. The, there needs to be a restriction on y on the, uh, on the range. y can't be zero. Okay, so that's uh, domain and range. These are a little tricky. I'm actually, as I'm saying this, I'm thinking that tangent one graphically looks like uh, it kind of everything's okay, but I'm going to bet there are actually some restrictions on uh, values that you can't put in there, some asymptotes that are hard to see with that spiral thing. So I might have to look at that a little bit more, but I was just looking for, um, uh, for you to see that sort of anything was possible there. So I'm going to add those two restrictions in here that y can't be equal to zero. And uh, this is some tricky stuff when uh, when you get into some complex functions. So that's why we were doing this graphically, just to see um, what we could see, what we could see and what restrictions were um, obvious and possible. In particular, I think when you have that um, uh, quadratic like this, you want to be able to see um, that there's if there's a minimum that the range has to sort of start there if there's a maximum the range has to can't can't go above that those are the two things that are most important for me right now okay i hope that helps i'm going to fix my uh, answers for those last two questions and uh, let me know if you have any more questions thanks